Hi, welcome back to Weaving with Ambrosia. I'm Ambrosia. And before we get started on this video, I actually wanted to let you guys know there's an update. Uh, so my 4-in-1 twills is now available in the Etsy shop. So you have the four twill towels in uh, one warp and that will be available with the exact fibers I use, the exact uh, thread count, everything I used in order to get these towels. And that's in my Etsy shop, which will be linked in the description below. And I hope to actually start adding a few more patterns into there in the next uh, probably few weeks. Over the next few weeks, I plan to add a couple more into there, hopefully. So keep an eye out for those and I'll keep you updated as they come along. But let's get back to our video. So today we're actually working on a uh, tube, basically. So ours won't be an exact tube because we have too many threads on the left side. We would need an uneven number of threads, but since it's just a sampler, we're not gonna cut a warp thread just for that because we're gonna need it later. Um, but if we were trying to do an actual tube or make like a, uh, a, a tunic or anything like that, we would probably wanna remove that one warp thread but we're not gonna worry about it right now. So let's get started. So we're actually gonna start with the dark on top, which means we're gonna start with uh, shed three and we're using the dark thread. I noticed in my last video, I was missing some of these uh, threads. So I'm gonna be a little bit more careful this time around to hopefully get them all. Okay, now we're gonna do one, three, and four. Pass three again. And now we're gonna go four. Oop, I can see exactly where those ones were wanting to get caught at. And now we're gonna lift sheds three, uh, sorry, two, three, and four, and pass through. And let's go ahead and do this again. Oops, I might need to fix that. I'm gonna need to fix that. <laughs> Let's pass through. All right, let me go fix while it's getting caught and then I'll be right back. So I think this is actually very similar to when we were doing the separate layers, except for, I think we've changed the order in which we do the middle section. So where originally we were raising the shed two, three, and four on the second pass, we now seem to be doing that on the first pass. So we've tried to slightly change the order. Then let's go ahead and keep 
go on for a little ways and then we'll see how it's looking. It's looking tubular, dude. And yep, we've got a nice little tube. Let's put my finger in on both ends. I'm not sure if you can see that, and it creates a tube. Let me see if I can get a better angle. So, hopefully you can see this a little bit better. I know the warp's right there, but yeah, that's a tube. It is connected on both sides, so you can definitely see. We've got a tube going there. And we could use this to make sleeves or a tunic or several other kind of options. We're gonna keep going for a little bit of ways, uh, switch colors, and I'll show you how we do that. But gonna do this for a little bit and we'll check back in. All right, so yellow on top, we're doing lift petal one. Lift pedal one, two, and three. Lift pedal two. Lift pedal one, two, and four. And we keep passing through. Let's continue this for a little way. This time. The way I'm checking for that, I'm not really looking, I'm just strumming the back of the fabric because if I've missed a string, I'll be able to feel it because it will be loose.
trying to open it, but I actually don't have a shed that will open the yellow. So. I need the burp. Maybe if I just relax it and I just wiggle my hands in. There we go. So, since I don't actually have a shed that will open the yellow from the black, I just have to shove my hands in and make it work. But as you can see, I can in fact put my fingers in there and make a little packet, a little pouch. And that's another little tube. So it's, it's actually pretty simple. It's keeping it all together. It's locked up on both sides. As you can see, it's stitched both together quite nicely. All right. So now we're gonna start on a slit, which means we are actually going to weave to the center of this. We're gonna lift shaft three only. Pass through through the center and go down. Lift shaft four only. Push back in where we exited out of. So we create a nice little shelvage right there. Feet down. Lift shafts one, three, and four. Pass under. Lift shaft three, pass through to the center again. Lift shaft four, pass through where we exited. And then we're gonna lift shaft three, one, our two, three, and four pass through again. So we're creating a solid back with just a slit in the front. We're gonna do this for a few more passes so it's pretty noticeable when we're done. Try to get it in the same spot. There we go. Now I can see it. Just keep doing this for about as long as we want the slit. All right, now you should be able to see a nice little V. Let me get you a little bit closer. So after that, you can see we've actually created this little slit right here, just from that pattern I was talking about, which is great if you're making a tunic and you know, you want a little bit of extra space right here, you can create that V-neck. And you just continue that for as long as you need. The back is solid and the sides are connected as we can see. So that's pretty exciting. All right, so we are actually going to make a uh, double tube. So right here you can see I've woven a little bit above where I did the slit last so that is closed up and we're making two defined tubes. One I'm going to use the dark string and the other I'm going to use the yellow because we do need different boats for both. And they recommend that you put a string in between. So if like you were doing three 
you could have the string and then, you know, you give a little tug boop, 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 and you can always make sure that they're separate. We're only going to do two because I don't really want to get a butterfly of yarn to do this. So count that to my laziness. But let's get started. First, you're going to lift shaft one. Let's pop that up. Let me go ahead and tuck the yellow boat in. We're going to leave, leave all of them from the left. So I'm going to slide in from here. Let me tuck it string real quick. Oop. And I'm going to weave this one up to this blue string. There we go. All right. Now we're going to beat down. And then we are going to lift shafts one, three, and four. There we go. Go ahead and pass back to the left. Let me make sure I'm getting all the way down to the bottom of. There we go. Oops, I don't want to pick that up in just a second. And this one's a little bit easier to make sure I start at the bottom. All right, and work my way up. Okay. All right, now we're gonna lift shaft four by itself. And again, pass through from the left. Oops. I don't want this one actually in there, so let me pull this back again. All right, very nice, and then Back in. Now making sure not to cut catch the other strings. Go ahead and beat down. And we're gonna lift shafts one, two, and four. And pass back through on the right. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're already starting to see that slit emerge. We're going to keep doing this for a little while, and hopefully we can see it come to life. All right, so what you see here is we actually have two separate tubes. They're pretty small, but I could stick my finger in each of them and you could tell they are completely separate. 
And you can actually make multiple like this. You would just need to do either enough yarn butterflies on your finger or enough uh, boats or shuttle sticks, whatever you're using in order to pass through. Um, you know, just depends on what you're doing. I just did two because I feel like most of the time that you're using this, you're probably going to be thinking like of making a tunic or s sleeves for a jacket or a cardigan or who knows, maybe you're trying to make little doll pants and you need a little buttonhole. I think most uses that you'll have for these are going to be just two. So that's what I did and I did them in distinct colors so you can see the difference and really how much flexibility you have. Next week we are going to do the color and weave section of the sampler. So we'll bring this back together. Actually I'll bring this back together so we can start the color weave after this and I'm excited to see what's next. And as always, like, subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see you in the next one.